What's going on guys? Amidst all this coronavirus craziness, um, really not getting much done here at the house. Both kids home from school and me being Mr. Mom all day, every day, except for the days I work. My wife is working from home. Anyway, with uh, fuel and oil prices at an all time low, I'm sure you guys have seen this transfer tank. It's always in my way when I'm working on stuff. It is a pain in the butt to move around. So I am using the remnants of an old camper frame here. I'm gonna chop it up, just make a little trailer that is roadworthy so I can move that around the property and drag it to and from the fuel station to fill up with off-road diesel. I use that for diesel equipment here at the house. And this house is heating oil, uh, heated in the winter. So we have a 280 gallon tank in the basement. To get heating oil delivered is about a dollar more a gallon than I can pay for off-road diesel at the local diesel store, um, which is um, stupid because in West Virginia we tax heating oil because it's clear, but we don't tax uh, off-road diesel because it's died. Anyway, uh, hop off the political soapbox. It just makes sense to get my own diesel since I have the transfer tank, so I do. So I'll be working on that today. Um, there's definitely a lot of stuff to talk about. These will be separate videos. Um, I got rid of the excursion and picked up a 2017 F-350. You just can't beat getting 0.9% APR on a used vehicle right now. And then the Case International, I'll do a video about that, about that and the skid steer here. It's out and it's been replaced by a John Deere 2210 with a loader. So anyway, for now, I'm gonna get back to work and um, just have a couple of minor cuts to make to square this trailer up and weld it together. And I think it's gonna need new tires before we can actually move it. But that'll be today's project. Sometimes you just get the grind and you go crazy. I just ground the wrong end of the trailer. So I have to grind the right end before I can weld it. But you didn't see that. Well, now the uh, the grinder cord is shorted out here due to use and abuse. I'm gonna see if I can fix that.
couple video videos ago, I ran out of the um, solid core welding wire and I haven't had a chance to get gas yet. Um, so I'm still using the shielded core wire, which I'm getting in the small spools. And I'm once again out of welding wire. But uh, we did get some work done. So this material here was very porous. Um, I did not get a good quality weld on that. I will clean it up with a grinder. That's not gonna make it strong. Um, I went ahead and reinforced it in the middle with a small fish plate and I welded this uh, diagonal here into the main cross member. I think for this particular trailer, it's never gonna see more than um, 100 gallons of diesel fuel on it. So I am probably gonna, gonna grind this down and just do a, a diamond shaped fish plate there. And I almost finished doing the same on the other side, holding a little, a little uh, quarter inch angle iron fish plate there. And that side's a little cleaner. We'll clean them both up. And once I get more wire, we will fish plate them. And then I will mount my tank right there in front of the axles. So I have just a little tongue weight. And I guess we'll see if we can get this project finished sometime.
Here's a walk around. I think this is pretty much done. I'm not gonna put uh, fenders on because the toolbox is gonna basically act as a primary splash guard. Got all these uprights more or less in line with the tires. I ended up reusing this as channel off of the dump trailer and these are cross members. Some of the thin cross members off the old camper frame that's on the dump trailer. Um, I got new hubcaps and stuff for it from Tracker Supply. I haven't put on yet. I guess it'll all get a coat of paint. We'll see. This isn't really a high priority project here. Um, it does need new tires. These old ones are really sketchy. But at any rate, this will give me a place to put my battery for the electric fuel pump on the transfer tank. And um, I think this will hold my little five gallon cans too with the lid closed, which would be nice. Cause then when I go to fill the transfer tank, this is a hundred gallon transfer tank. When I go fill this up with, um, with diesel, I can put my small cans in the back and go ahead and get 93 and 87 for my saws and my lawnmower and my other stuff. Um, I don't know if I talked about this. I grabbed a new jack from Harbor Freight. It did not fit at all. I ended up using a plasma cutter to just torch that out. So it's not very important that it be strong, given how small the trailer is. Uh, transfer tanks held on with four grade eight. Um, these are half inch bolts. And uh, like I said, these old tires are beat. Maybe get some new ones. And it needs tail lights, which I'll probably mount to those uprights. I'm not sure exactly where I want to put the toolbox on it to look best, but it uh, it slides back and forth. All right, I may add lights this at some point, but I'm calling the building part of it done. I decided to mount the toolbox all the way back in front of the axle, so that way even if there's no fuel in it, I still have lots of tongue weight, which shouldn't really be a problem with this trailer, but you gotta be careful with something this small. And then I had this really old, uh, cool, uh, 11 and a half inch wide it's like basically 12 inch um, old growth lumber that was in this house when we moved in just a couple planks of it so i cut a piece of that to fit in here and that works as a bench so if i'm waiting to pump fuel off um while i fill up my oil tank or whatever i can just sit down there and chill out it also gives me a spot to put my knees on when i'm opening this like I said, I can put my battery in there, run my electric fuel pump. That'll be perfect. Nice little setup. Um, the only thing really left to do is put new tires on here and put some taillights on it. All right, here I am at the local fuel station that has off-road diesel. It's $1.99 a gallon. I have brand new Harbor Freight tires on this trailer and new LED lights. So we're going to go ahead and fill it up and take it home so we can fill up the oil tank. All right, here we are set up. I just picked up 100 gallons of off-road diesel. And we're going to see how fast it works. This battery was at 12 and a half volts. I think it was charged. You can see it gets it pretty good. I got this pump off my brother. It's got over 6,000 gallons run through it. So that's a pretty good pump. But as you can see, those gallons are clicking away. And I can pretty much sit here and walk away from it. It'll pump out all 100 gallons. I don't want to let it go too far because it'll cavitate and get all that junk off the bottom of the tank. Uh, this doesn't have like an auto hold on feature. So I just take the cap off of my, this is where my oil tank comes out of the house. I just take the cap off and wedge it under there and that keeps it on. And as long as you keep it going, it doesn't foam up or anything. So I'll let it sit here and do what I got it to do. So getting this stuff for $2 a gallon, that saved you like a dollar a gallon over what they charge to deliver it. When you're getting 100 or 200 gallons at a time, man, those savings add up quick. So I know this thing looks ghetto, but I built it to do a job. Also got this uh, goldenrod filter from Tractor Supply. You get it with that little extension and it threads on. We had a bad, uh, a bad batch of fuel at some point in time it plugged up the filters in my furnace so this will help keep that from happening and it's got this nice clear bowl where i can see what's coming out of there you can see this is nice and clean but if it starts to get, get uh water or junk down in there you can drain it that's what i like about that one it also gave me an extra little foot of space there to reach my oil filler so all right well we got the christmas lights up 
this uh, project's just about done. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I'll see you on the next one.